another five minutes. Okay. If we can. Okay. Where were yeah, yeah. we? Where were we? We were. What drives you nuts as a director? Oh yes, yes, yes. Cool. When an actor doesn't, uh, when they, when they don't trust me. Right. You know. Right. When they think, and believe me, I know where they're coming from. Because I've been there. So you've been there oh, before. I've been terrible. I there. I've worked on productions, and I don't think the directors ever wanted to see me ever again, because I had a terrible attitude. Terrible. terrible. Why? 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 Oh God. Why, Marcia? I didn't trust anybody. I, th I ego, ego. Okay. Okay. We're talking about that at the beginning of the conversation. Which was what makes a bad actor. That's correct. Because it really got in my way of, you know, thinking for, I knew. For how long I, it got in your way? Oh, many years. Many years. But but when I finally woke up that this is not a solo show, you it's know, not. even if it is a solo show, there are other people that are involved that, that have input that are part. I mean, theater is a, co is a collaborative process, you know. So I, I've learned to love that collaborative pro. It's it's freeing, you know. It's freeing. It makes oh, so all the responsibility isn't on my shoulders. Right. I can relax and just act. You know, what do they want me to do? What do they think? Okay, but I. But then if I do that, why does she do this later? And I'll ask that question. It's but not in a combative way. Just you know a genuine question. And and so I'm much easier to work with now than I was. Interesting. Now as a playwright, how do you find your audience, Marcia? Like how does I it work? stopped writing. No, but when you're writing, I can tell you. oh no, no 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 wait a second, you're not going I'm not gonna get get your way like with that answer. That's why I stopped writing. Why you stopped writing? Because I couldn't find audience. That's very That's interesting. Why. But how come? Why? What do you mean you couldn't find an audience? Well, I all my plays have been produced in one, you know, all like off off Broadway on one level or another. They've all been produced. Right. Which is amazing. Yeah. In this crazy yes, town. Yes, yes. Well, I have my own theater too for 17 years. So I could do anything I wanted there. So I did do my plays there too. But it it's just it, it was just very difficult to find I, I just never did. I never find found somebody that won. Ense I'm a member of Ensemble Studio Theater, and they produced one of my first plays, Welfare. And uh, I want to read your plays. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll get them to you. I have one that I turned into a film script. You promised me that. I me really that. want to get produced. I want to direct it though. What's the name of it? Full Moon and High Tide in the Ladies' Room. Oh, wow, what a great title. Yeah. What a great title. Yeah. I want to read your stuff, Marsha. Okay. Can I read it? Yeah, sure. Do you mind? No. You're not going to get Why would upset? I mind? I don't know, because actors are, you know, artists are very protective when they own work. Are we? Well, we to have to degree. be. We have to be, because that play was was plagiarized in L.A. Somebody in L.A. took my play. No. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. yes, yes, yes. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. And they even had the nerve to call it full moon. Oh, my God. Full moon. They called it full moon in the ladies' room. They left out the high tide part because I had it uh, uh, copywritten. I want to read. I do a lot of reading. And I love I love reading. And I, I don't know. I think that writing is, I like to write myself. And I, mm -hmm. I'm not there to call myself a playwright or a writer, but... I'm putting things down. I'm putting things down, and that's good. It's like when Lincoln told me. She's a big supporter of mine. She says, "Sister, you just gotta put things down." Yeah. And uh, don't be so concerned about it because I have so many things, and I, I just gotta let it out of my system. Yeah. Let them out of your system. Just yeah. Like when you go to the toilet, you just flush it, right? Just go. It's just get the out last of your thing that I wrote was is, was called um, Promethea Bound and Sisyphus Two. Oh well, that's a tough one to swallow. Now that's uh, a play that I wrote from my dreams. I remembered my dreams for a year and a half, and I wrote them down. And then I wrote this play, and it sort of wrote itself. And it's a multimedia play. I did it in Australia, but it wasn't very good. It didn't go well at all. I wasn't happy with it. But 
after that, I didn't write anything. I so stopped writing. So you don't miss it? Do you miss it? No, not at all. No, it was too heartbreaking. It was too heartbreaking to write something and then have it sit on a shelf somewhere. It was just, or play for three weeks, you know. Right. It's, it's, Norman Mailer once said that, that it's impossible to, to keep writing if you don't have your work seen. It's impossible, right. and he's right. Yeah. He's right. I mean, maybe some people could sit at home and just write novels and write them and write them and put them in a drawer. Some people have done that, I guess. But, but it, you see so many. But I couldn't do it. But everybody publishes books <coughs> in our days. Come on, I, I go to the airport, go anywhere. You see all these paperback books anywhere, right. anywhere. Come on, it's like, you know, it's, it seems like, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. The writing is about rewriting, and I guess. Well, yeah. I guess you have to, but I don't know, you have to be happy. Although some writers never rewrote. There were writers that never did rewrite at all. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Well, I don't know. I just guess, talking from my own experience, like, I don't know. Writing is, is maybe traumatic, tough, but it's kind of liberating. Writing. Yeah, I found yeah. a little. It's liberating to me. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's just. It seems. I don't. It's 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 liberating. It doesn't mean that it's good or bad or yeah. in between, but mm -hmm. it's it's like an ex exorcism. But everybody has a different. Experience. I just at a certain point, I I felt like if I can't write like. At least like Sam Shepard. Oh, he's so brilliant. Janae. Oh, I love you know, Janae, the mates. Lorca. If mm. I can't write like them, I don't want to write. I just reached a point, because most of my plays, until the last one, were straight, realistic plays. Right. And I just didn't want to do it anymore. And the things that I was writing about, I didn't want to write about those things anymore. I was very, you know, staunchly feminist and, you know, it's everybody else's fault, but, you know. I want to hear it more, more, more. I keep talking because now, as I'm not taking a little nap here, I'm just relaxing. This is relaxing. <laughs> Hearing you talking. What about films and movies and actors? What kind of actors turn you on, Marshall? What kind of work do you like to see when you, I don't know, when you go to the movies? The same the thing. Yeah. I think Meryl Streep is probably the best actress in the world today. Yes, she is. Today. She's she great. Is. She's the greatest. I've seen her. She astounds me. Uh, Mother Courage twice. Oh, yeah. I, I missed that. You know, Marsha, it's... You can't... You yeah, can't she you really can't. embodies a character. She does. She? she really does, and she doesn't hold she back one inch. She gives herself over to it. Yeah, yeah she, she surrenders. She gives herself over to it. Yeah. She surrenders so beautifully. Yeah. And she just gives everything she has. Right. And she doesn't dare to keep one. She just gives it all. And she's so free. She's yeah. so free. Yeah, yeah. That it's almost, or even That's overwhelming. Great. Twice, Austin Peddleton, the scene that she did with Austin Peddleton. Ah, and he was chopping some wood. I fell in love with Austin since that yeah. day. I was like, he's so, to me, he's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And he makes me laugh, and he's funny, and he's so creative on stage. And when mm -hmm. I saw them both. Together, yeah. Ah! Oh, mm -hmm. He was chopping that wood, and she was just relaxed on the table. She was mm -hmm. taking me in very slowly, but it was a beautiful connection. connection. And then I saw her years before in The Seagull with Kevin Klein, uh -huh. Christopher Walken, John Goodman, and The Public uh -huh. as well. Uh -huh. And that was, yeah, that was Nina. She did Nina. She did I would have Nina. liked to have seen her Ar Arcadena. Ah. I'll bet that was great. Beautiful. If that's not my phone. Everything really, she does. It's anything she does. I, I got to tell you, the last movie, The Iron Lady, I didn't enjoy it that much. I think she was Well, great. the movie was... It was the bad. movie was awful. Oh, thank you, Marcia. And the character... Thank you so much. And the character was, was a bore. Why was so... But she was great. No, she's but, great. But, but that just goes to show you 
that a great actor can't save everything. Right. They can't. And certainly she didn't, because I hated the movie. No, I know. I well, hated it. I didn't like the woman. Yes. I was like, why are we, why are we, why I'm watching this? Because she's the greatest well, American actress. There's so many great actors, but I said, why I keep watching this film? I was upset. Right, right. I was upset. Right, right. I said, what the hell? Let's do it. Let's do it. She should have gotten one for Julia, Julia and Julie Julie and Julia. And Ju yeah. She was child. great as She Julia was great, child. right? Oh, I loved her. Was Stanley Tucci? He's one yeah, of my yeah. boys. There's so many great actors out there. Yeah, you can't yeah. nail. I mean, Marsha, come on. There's so many great they actors. They really are. Inspiring they actors. They really are. Yeah. I love to be inspired. I don't care what it is. I want to be inspired. Yeah. Right? Well... I don't know inspired. I just want to see great work. Yeah. That's all. I, you want to see truth. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. Not that simple. Not that easy. That's what I want to see. And nothing less. Well, no, I won't say not. I don't mind. I go to movies sometimes and see actors that are, you know, they're competent. They're adequate. Right. They tell the story. Right. It's just the story's so stupid, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> that you say, oh. European films are a little bit different. Although they it. make a lot of crap, too. They do. They do. They do. They, do. they make they a lot do. of crap. They do. The last thing I seen was, I'm, I'm watching Gerard Depardieu. I'm, I love Gerard Depardieu. And I'm watching The Count of Monte Cristo. Right uh -huh. now. He's, to me, he's so great. He's yeah. so great. Mm -hmm. Talking with Lisa Kemp about him, because I'm a huge fan of Gerard Depardieu. Yeah. And I seen the Cyrano Bergerac again last week. Which? Cyrano Bergerac. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I saw that French film, uh, The Untouchable, Untouchables. Who's in it? Uh, Isn't it a film? It's a French film. It's a French film. It sounds film familiar, though. With, with a, uh, oh, it's this guy who goes to help a man who's paraplegic. It's a wonderful film. The thing that I like about the good, really good European films is that they're not about violence and sex. I know. I'm so they're I'm about it's so tiresome, right? They're about human connections, you right. know. Right, 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 right. What interests me? No, when I, I read about the people that you taught and all the students and all these people and all, all these big names, how do you feel about that, Marcia? I mean, when you think about your work as an acting coach, having all this influence and all these people. How does it make you feel? Good. Good. Right? Uh, yeah, no, it, when, when, when people that uh, have worked with me go on and do something that's good, I feel good. When they go on and they may become very successful, but the work isn't good, then I say, well, well, <laughs> I tried. You, you know, tried. I put out what I can put out. I, put, I just, you know, I, I give the tools, and then people do with it what they can. That's it. And I, I really loved teaching. I loved it. It was, it's been wonderful. I still coach privately, but it, it's, it's satisfying on another level. It's great to help uh, other people, actors, to be all they can be, to be the best that they can. Mm -hmm. To you know, I really love passing it on, so to speak. You know. You're a missionary. You're an artist. <laughs> yeah. Actor, entertainer, director, playwright. That's pretty. You're a happy woman, aren't you? I aren't am. You? You're happy, I right? am. I am. You're happy in your own skin. You look yeah. at yourself in the mirror and said, okay. Well, I, I don't know. Sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and I say, I don't oh. like this. I don't like that. Ah. And, you know? look, at your <laughs> look at your profile. Look at your, your curly hair. <laughs> Do you tan much? You don't like yes. tanning? Yes. Yeah. That's I'm my tan. girl. I see some color. I'm tan. How come you got that color? You're not going to the beach, are you? I did in, are you using in protection? Portugal. Yeah, but are you using protection? No, I but I like don't go for that long. Uh, I, you know, how I'll lay long out. are you going, Marsha? I can't I'm lay out in the sun more than an hour at a time. Yeah, I can see that. You like you like a lovebird. You like to be out there. Right? No, Get the but sun? No, people who are, are sun worshippers, they go and they lay out in the sun for like eight hours. Yeah. I can't do that. An hour, and I'm like, okay, let's get out of here. Cool. You know, or go for a walk or go in the water or something. But you like the sun? Yeah. Oh, okay. sure. 
Yeah. Yeah, I like the sun. It's cool. You're a happy woman. I can see it. I don't yeah. know what else I'm covering. And let me see. Sun. We are about done because you have to go. But hold on for a second. You're not going home that quick. I want to see. Yeah, I love that song. George Harrison was such a genius. Honestly, he was such a genius. I was watching the documentary directed by Martin Scorsese about George Harrison. Yeah. 